So um, it's the year 2001. How old are you and what are you doing at that point in your life? I was 21. I was in college trying to figure out what I wanted to be when I grew up. Um, and I was just having fun with my friends. I was having a good time in college. And things, things were good. This is hard, Michelle, but you know, um, I just need you to take me back to that night. Um, it was August 1st, 2001. Mm -hmm. And what happened that night? I had been out with friends. And um, we had just, we were visiting someone who had just come back out of the country. And I was just hanging out with them. And then afterwards, we went to go eat. And it was during the summer. I was in college. So after we'd finished eating and dropped off my friends, I'd started driving home at about 4 in the morning. And as I was driving down a major road in Los Angeles, I saw a man in a, in a luxury car keeping pace with me down the road. He was waving at me, and he was just communicating a, a sense of urgency to me. So he motioned for me to pull over um, just on a small side street off the main road. And when I pulled over, he um, forced his way into my vehicle. And um, over in the next next hour, he, he um, beat me a little and um, sexually assaulted me, and um, he eventually did rape me. I mean, at that moment, can you put words to what was going on for you? I just kind of went into survival mode. My emotions shut off, figured out what I needed to do. Um, I made sure to get his license plate during the course of, course of that time, um, any fabric or um, any other sort of, you know, hair or whatnot that I could get from him. While I was in there, um, I tried to think of different ways out to prevent that part from happening, but he didn't allow that. I knew I didn't want to die, <laughs> not that way. Um, I knew that I would rather maintain consciousness throughout the whole thing to, um, to be able to walk away and to find him later and to make sure that he would never, ever do that to anyone again. So even at that moment, you understood that your role as a victim at that point was to gather evidence. Absolutely, because it would be the only thing that I had to stand against in court. I mean, he, he'd beat me, but not enough for a court to say, you know, he, you know, he had absolutely positively terrorized me. And it was, you know, it was the first step to, to what we needed to have a case in court. Are you okay talking about it? Yeah, I am. Even though it makes you cry? Mm -hmm. You're in a moment of trauma. And after he leaves your car, what do you think of? What goes through your mind then? I was scared. I was scrambling for a pen and a paper because I was afraid that I was going to forget his license plate um, and the things that he had talked about with me, you know, things that would identify him. Um, I just started writing those down and I, I was trying to think of where a police station was and I remember. And what happens when you get to the police station? What do they say to you? They they brought me inside and they just you know sat me down and tried to calm me, and then they said that they had contacted the um, the detective, and that he was going to come to the station shortly. And they said that they would take me to a, a rape treatment center after they were done interviewing me, and um, they did do that. They drove me down there, and they um, at the rape treatment center. They had a counselor as well as a nurse. When they explained to you what was going to happen with the rape kit, the actual test, what did you think at that moment? Because it's a long, in-depth process. When you are literally stripped bare, and I do remember crying <laughs> because it's just, you, know, you, you go through it, you, you go through an assault like that, and then to just have to be stripped bare again was not very comfortable, to say the least. What was the most uncomfortable part? I think just 
maybe even just getting to that point. Um, because I had to wait. Um, I wasn't. I wasn't allowed to go to the restroom until I had the rape kit done. Um, I couldn't shower, um, wash my hands or anything. I could still smell him on me, and I just had to wait. Um, and then, you know, when I got there, I had to remove all of my clothing and have them take the DNA that they needed to from the necessary parts of my body. And, you know, just to go through that whole experience is, um, you know, it, it doesn't leave you with much dignity. And yet, in your head, you were saying to yourself, what, as you were getting the rape, rape kit tested and all? That it needed to be done. Um, and that this was... You know, this is just what I needed to go through to be able to come anywhere close to putting him in a place where he wouldn't be able to do this to anyone else. And I had also resolved to not let him take more from me that he had already taken. Um, I knew that I wanted to finish school. I knew that I wanted to do well in school. And um, I was also working part-time and I wanted to keep doing well at my job. And those are things that I didn't want to allow him to have. Sometimes people say, well, you know, if it's been eight years, you heal. Can you tell us what it's like? Can you heal from something like this ever? I think you can. You heal to, uh, for myself, I heal to a point where I have moved on with my life. Um, this was something that happened in my life that helped to shape part of who I was, but not to define me. And knowing that, I was able to move forward. Um, and a lot of that was having closure through the trial that had happened as well. Um, but I think the healing will be there, but there are still consequences to, to my actions. Even though the outcome was good, I realized that there are certain things that I'm going to have to carry with me for the rest of my life. For example, when he gets released from jail, you know, I, I knew that I was probably going to have to look over my shoulder to some extent for, for the rest of my life. As you know, as long as as long as he's alive. What does that do to you? I don't care as much about what he did to me. Um, as long as he doesn't do it to anyone else again. You were able to have closure because there was evidence there was a trial, there was a conviction. But what do you think you would be feeling now if your rape kit had never been tested? If it had been on the shelf for year after year after year? I think I'd be a very, very different person. Um, knowing, knowing where he was and what was going on in terms of the legal system definitely helped me to kind of cross that threshold over into beginning to heal to be able to begin to go on with my life. To know that he was still out there, potentially hurting people, um, and never knowing, you know, is he gonna show up at my doorstep one day? I mean, that, that, would, that would have been such, such a burden and a hindrance on my life. And you know, I, I can't even begin to imagine how, how my life would have turned out had you know, my rape kit not been, been analyzed and used in court. Do you want women who see you talking about this, who know what you went through, not only as a victim, but then giving your rape kit, going to trial, when they look at you, you want them to see what? Um, that I want women to see that there is hope and that there, there is a way to be able to regain joy in our lives, regardless of the things that happen to us. You made a decision to to kind of put yourself back in a place where you had been, to mm -hmm. counsel rape victims. Why? I just wanted to really bring something positive out of something that was so negative. And I selected peace over violence. 
I think they do a great job at this idea of redemption. They really do restore the honor and worth of these um, women and children and some men that come through their doors looking for support. What do you think changed the most about you after the assault? I think for me to be able to get through it in a healthy manner, I needed to really be much more introspective and to take a good hard look at what I believed about myself and just how I wanted to live my life. And what I came to was that I definitely believe in the idea of redemption, um, in restoring the honor and worth of something. Um, and along those lines, to believe that everything negative in my life could be redeemed for something positive. So that wouldn't wouldn't have been a waste. So that I would have no question about the purpose of the things that happened to me.